I'm recording this lecture uh, because I don't think we'll have time to get to it this week with our guest speaker. So I posted the PowerPoint in the Moodle course and then I'll post this um, once I'm finished. So the gastrointestinal system is what we're talking about. Our objectives here. The GI tract is basically you can think of it as like a disassembly line, um, breaking down our food, you know, further and further to get the nutrients out of it that we need. The goal is to chew our food super well, of course, and then um, get the breakdown started in the mouth with enzymes from our saliva. And then as the food passes through the GI tract, nutrients become available for our bodies to use for fuel and all the things that we need food for. As you can see here, carbohydrates, they break down to disaccharides and then further to monosaccharides. Proteins break down to peptides and amino acids. And lip, uh, lipids break down to diglycerides and then monogly um, monoglycerides and fatty acids. The GI tract is not just the stomach and the intestines. The digestion really starts in the mouth. Um, with chewing up your food very well and the, the enzymes in our saliva breaking it down and then all the various parts um, of the GI tract function to do different um, different jobs but we have the mouth and the pharynx the esophagus stomach small intestine which can be broken up into the three parts of the duodenum the jejunum and the ileum but the primary area of nutrient absorption happens in the duodenum and then we have the large intestines, colon, and the rectum. So here's um, a resource for you guys to look at to um, familiarize yourself a little bit better with, um, with the GI function. So other organs are major helpers in digestion process, such as obviously your teeth, tongue, and saliva, but then also organs such as the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas, they um, play really important roles even though um, the bulky food doesn't pass through them. Anything that is eaten or consumed, whether it's food, alcohol, medicine, or toxins, it gets filtered by the liver. And then once we ingest food, it's digested by the stomach and the intestines and then it gets absorbed into our blood system, our bloodstream, and it then it goes to the liver. So everything gets absorbed into the blood and then gets filtered through the liver. When fats are consumed, the liver breaks them down. It also creates bile, which converts excess carbohydrates and proteins and stores them for later use. Bile is super necessary for digestion. It helps the body absorb fat into the bloodstream, and it helps to carry unusable waste products and toxins out of the body through stool. So the gallbladder, which um, has a storage of bile, is obviously both the liver and the gallbladder are super important for that. Then for the pancreas, Almost 95% of the pancreas actually consists of exocrine tissue, and they produce enzymes for digestion, and they regulate pancreatic secretions. But the remaining 5% of the tissue is endocrine, and we learned about endocrine earlier. These cells called the islets of Langerhans, that was, um, do, does anybody does that ring a bell? Does that, does that name ring a bell? Because um, these are clusters of cells. They kind of look sort of like grapes, and they produce two hormones. And the two hormones are one, insulin, which we should be pretty familiar with. And the other one, insulin um, helps to lower our blood sugar. And then there's glucagon, which helps to raise our blood sugar. But do you remember what insulin actually does? How it how it actually affects glucose in the body. It is a, acts as a key to get the, the glucose into the cells. So the next um, things just to review the um, histamine receptors, we have H1, which we know has a lot to do with um, the bronchi, and we have some allergies and asthma, um, things that are related there with the smooth muscle. 
Um, and then we have H2 receptors. They're located on the brain, the stomach, heart, and blood vessels. And they stimulate the stomach to make hydrochloric acid, which um, is what we also think of as just stomach acid. And then there's H3 receptors. They're presynaptic, they're um, located on the histamine releasing cells and they inhibit histamine release. We don't have to, we're not going to learn very much about H3, so we don't have to worry too much about it, but we want to focus for this chapter on H2. Um, H1 receptors, just to review, they can cause the itchiness. H2 receptors are what we're going to focus on for the most part for this chapter. And then, like I said before, H3, don't have to worry so much about. So there's several sensory cells in the stomach that play various roles. Um, they're called, here we go, the mucous neck cells, the parietal cells, and the chief cells. So the mucous neck cells secrete thin acidic mucus. Um, the parietal cells secrete hydrochloric acid, and they're also needed to activate protein digesting enzymes, um, which is called pepsin. And then the chief cells secrete pepsinogen, the inactive proenzyme form of pepsin, and then hydrochloric um, acid is necessary for the conversion of pepsinogen to pepsin. So they're all they all sort of play a role in one st and the kind of one thing affects the another in a in a cascade kind of order. So the general overall is we have histamine release, then we have the parietal cells, they secrete the hydrochloric acid, then we have the pepsinogen secreted from the chief cells to convert into the pepsin due to the hydrochloric acid. They need the hydrochloric acid to do that. The diseases or disorders that can develop in the GI tract include GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease, uh, peptic ulcer disease or PUD, inflammatory bowel disease or IBD, constipation and diarrhea. So the etiology of GERD, it's very common condition and it's essentially a backing up of the gastric content from the stomach into the esophagus and it's that what we classically call heartburn. It gives us that kind of feeling like heartburn. And risk factors include alcohol, smoking, spicy foods, medications such as aspirin and, and NSAIDs, calcium channel blockers. Does anyone remember what a calcium channel blocker can be used for? Uh, tetracycline. And then, um, alad, oh gosh, how do I say this one? Anyways, Fosamax, which is what we use to treat osteoporosis. That's the one, that's a bisphosphonate. Um, and so that's one that we'll learn about quite a bit because that can affect the oral cavity um, for patients who are on Fosamax. But these are all risk factors for GERD. So for treatment, GERD can be improved with lifestyle changes. As dental hygienists, we have to be on the lookout for erosion. Um, it's typically seen on the linguals of maxillary um, anterior teeth. Um, or, but you can also see it as these um, kind of um, circular um, areas that um, form on the top of premolars and mostly molars, you'll see it. It kind of is almost like um, it starts to wear away the cusps, basically, and you have these. There also can be called wear facets, but sometimes it's a combination of acid erosion and wearing. But typically you see this more because the wearing usually will make it flat, where these pitted kind of scooped out areas is more indicative of acid erosion. Peptic ulcer disease is a term for several acid peptic disorders affecting the upper GI tract, but mostly the stomach and the duodenum. So if a person has a gastric ulcer, it's located in the stomach. If they have a duod duodenal ulcer, it's located in the duodenum. And the duodenal ulcers are more common than the gastric ulcers. The medical community used to think um, that ulcers were just from excessive stomach acid, um, but it was discovered that a bacteria called Helicobacter pylori, or most of the time you'll hear it as H. pylori, was um, 
basically causes about 90% of peptic ulcers. And then there are other factors such as excessive gastric juices um, or uh, uh, some people maybe who take a lot of NSAIDs or if they just react strongly to NSAIDs and then smoking, alcohol, and stress. This image shows the natural defense that um, we usually have against the the acidic gastric juices and the peptic ulcers. We have this thick layer of mucus and then the mucosa. And so we have all in the submucosa, like there's just all of these barriers that usually protect us just fine from the damaging forces. But if we have something like these um, injurious agents like the H. pylori, um, NSAIDs, aspirin, cigarette alcohol, these things, then it can wear into all of these mucosal layers and um, wear a hole. And so then that's what you get over here. It's kind of been eaten away and then it causes acute inflammation and granulation tissue forms and fibrosis, all these damaging effects of the injury and then the resulting inflammation. So the symptoms of peptic ulcer, um, it's usually a lot of pain. Um, a lot of times if the stomach is empty, um, you get more pain and there's a feeling of hungry hunger. And then when you start, when the damage has already started, now there's a very susceptible area. So the acid alone can do more damage, even if the bacteria is not there, just because now that there's a barrier that's been broken. So, of course, for treatment, pharm pharmacological therapy, which we'll learn from our guest speaker, but then also lifestyle changes can, um, can improve PUD a lot as well. Um, IBD or inflammatory bowel disease is a chronic condition of the large intestine and the rectum. Individuals either suffer from ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. Ulcerative colitis involves inflammation and sores along the superficial lining of the large intestine or the colon and the rectum. And then Crohn's disease is characterized by inflammation of the lining of the digestive tract, which often can involve deeper layers of the digestive tract, and it can also so go all the way from the mouth all the way to the rectum. So it's um, uh, more severe. So here you see um, the etiology. It's ulcerative colitis is an inflammatory disease of really unknown cause. There could be some kind of immune dysfunction. Um, it, they can come and go. They can uh, individuals can relapse and then go into remission. Then Crohn's disease has a little bit more of a genetic predisposition, and um, it can also go into periods of remission and then relapse. The ileum and the colon affected are affected the most frequently, but like I said before, it, it you can see ulcerations from the oral cavity all the way to the the anus, so it can affect anywhere along the the GI tract. Again, pharmacological therapy that we'll learn more about um, can be managed, but really there's no cure for ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, and 70 to 80% of people um, will, uh, with Crohn's disease will end up needing some kind of surgery because it will get so damaged they'll need to remove the part that's of the intestine that's so damaged. Diarrhea and um, constipation. So what are the causes here? Um, food intolerance, a, a virus could cause diarrhea, uh, stress can cause diarrhea, medications. Uh, what medications have we learned about that cause a lot of GI issues? What can you think of? Antibiotics, perhaps. And then pregnancy. For constipation, oops, for constipation, um, it's generally not getting enough fluids, not getting enough um, diet, uh, dietary fiber. Um, anytime you take narcotics, you're at risk for constipation. Iron supplements can be constipating. And then children who just resist the urge can get a uh, backup from the bulk um, building up in their intestines. And then certain foods can be more constipating than the others, such as red meats or a lot of gluten, a lot of processed foods or dairy and alcohol. Irritable bowel syndrome is um, a disorder that um, 
symptoms can be kind of varied. They can be diarrhea, constipation, just abdominal pain. But generally speaking, it would last longer than 12 weeks and other conditions would be ruled out that you don't have like some other, some other GI disorder um, that's happening. And, you know, it's it, sometimes it's um, a little bit harder to nail down the, why IBS happens and sometimes it can be stress related diet or medications or, um, and it can also come and go as well.